So welcome back. Uh, uh, so in last lecture we uh, discussed mostly about the geophysical techniques and all that and which can help us in locating the, uh, the subsurface deformation, near subsurface deformation and that helps us in identifying the uh, potential site uh, for trenching and that, that means to carry out the paleoseismic studies. Now as I emphasized uh, uh, in previous lecture also that uh, uh, with the help of geophysical technique you would not be able to categorize the fault whether it is an active fault or not, but at least you will be able to uh, identify the uh, deformation in the recent sediments and at least, uh, to some extent you will be able to tell that uh, whether where exactly the, the fault exists and uh, uh, to be more precise we will be able to identify at least the, uh, the pattern of deformation and geometry of fault. So, various techniques were been discussed uh, in the last lecture starting from um, uh, seismic refraction, um, other geophysical methods like resistivity survey and uh, a few more are left out which uh, we have uh, is uh, particularly on, on the GPR. So, this is uh, the area where we identified the, the active fault trace using high resolution satellite photos. And before getting into the part of the paleoseismology, we did GPR survey to locate the, the fault trace uh, and the location of the fault subsurface. So, uh, uh, this is the fault scarp uh, which I am showing exactly is somewhere over here. This is on the left bank of the Bias River where uh, it uh, the, the Bias, de, de, Bias River debouch into the Indo-Gangetic Plain in northwest Himalaya in Punjab region. Uh, so, again the, the like it was really good uh, experience we had in this region that uh, people uh, uh, did not allow us to uh, dig the trench because there was a an, uh, water pipeline which was running somewhere uh, in this portion. Uh, but the even the, the villagers were not very much uh, aware that where exactly the uh, or precisely the, the pipe lies and if uh, while digging because in, in for paleoseismic studies we will open up the uh, the trench here. So, we will uh, uh, dig the area to look the, uh, the section and the displaced layers uh, uh, before uh, uh, getting the, the details of, of, of the events and all that. So, uh, uh, then we explain them that we have uh, a technique uh, uh, by which we can identify uh, the, the location of the pipe as well as uh, uh, the, uh, the area where we would like to go for trenching. So, we did uh, uh, 3D and uh, 2D uh, 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 GPR uh, mapping of this region uh, uh, which was uh, like uh, across the scarp. So, Usually, we open up the trench to see the section across the scarp as I was I have shown you that uh, the as what, what we did in the topograph collection of the topographic profile and all that. So, this was the location of, uh, of our trench uh, after GPR, but I would like to show that what we observed in GPR and what uh, in what way it helped us in uh, restricting ourselves to uh, a, a particular area uh, without damaging the, the subsurface utility. So, this is uh, uh, the profile uh, GPR profile which we collected uh, and we were very uh, uh, able to precisely locate the water pipeline which was sitting far away from the, from the area of interest. And then finally, uh, we, we when we looked at the GPR profile the deformation uh, in the subsurface was quite uh, prominent in the, the upper part of the scarp. Hence, we restricted ourselves not uh, getting um, uh, uh, and digging up to the up to the water pipeline. So, we this also in, in a way it helps it reduces your time money and you can precisely target the area 
where you would like to dig the trench. So, this portion we dug and the profile of this the, the black dotted line or the box which we has been drawn here is exactly the, the trench area which has been shown here. This is the log or the trench wall which was exposed uh, uh, by digging the, the area. So, we have this uh, with this that is the GPR uh, survey we, we, we were able to comfortably go up to the depth of say around 5 to 6 meters. So, this profile it shows the, uh, the depth here as well as the two way travel time. So, uh, the uh, what I will do is that because we are using extensively a GPR uh, in, for uh, carrying out this study and GPR is one of the, uh, the best robust technique which is uh, in, in our, our understanding uh, is the, uh, the geophysical technique which is available and is extensively used. So, we will try to give you uh, one lecture exclusively on the, the GPR, how it works and uh, what are the, the working principles and what all information uh, we should uh, have with us when we are doing GPR. So, we will give one lecture on this, uh, particularly on GPR and how we try to locate and what are all parameters we try to consider to get the best profile. So, moving further, this is uh, uh, like what uh, uh, I was showing in the previous slide comparing the uh, like seismic reflection and the trenches which were been dug in other part of the world even with the help of resistivity survey uh, uh, people have done and then open up the trench and they were able to compare whatever the results they were they got in the, uh, uh, the uh, by doing the geophysical uh, uh, surveys. So, uh, in a way the uh, this will not tell us that uh, what is the age of this layers, okay. But when you open up the trench, you uh, collect the samples and you date the events that is required. So, geophysical te technique in short will is not going to help you in uh, characterizing the fault whether it is active or not. But of course, uh, when we know uh, one thing that uh, the, the area in which we are conducting the survey is uh, your very young uh, surface which is displaced. Okay. So, uh, b b the younger displacement uh, preserved in the sediment section to some extent can also taken as a preliminary interpretation that this is a trace of the active fault. Now, with the help of uh, uh, GPR uh, survey, you can also perform uh, three dimensional uh, mapping and that what we did, the grid has been shown here. So, this is the grid which we took almost 20 meter by 6 meter here and we took multiple profiles and when we club this, so this the previous one was 2D profile we have and this is the 3D profile in the area of interest what we wanted to do and this also helped us in identifying and interpreting the depth of the fault with changes. So, the best po, uh, pro, um, section which we obtained uh, in the, the dimension if you see we are having like around 10 meter section we have cut and we have done this and then we are having around uh, 20 meters in this one. Okay. So, sorry this is 6 meter. So, you have 6 meter and then you have 20 meter. Uh, so, this, this direction is across the across the scarp. So, what, what you see is that uh, this is the scarp here. So, we moved our GPR in this fashion. Okay. So, whatever the data which was, was been collected, this is this profile is not topographically corrected one, but whatever the data was obtained uh, with the help of in, 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 uh, in the three dimension pattern, then we were able to fix up the, the geometry of the fault here. So, uh, the best portion we picked up and we open up the trench there. So, this is one of the, uh, the best uh, method which uh, we feel is available uh, which can give you uh, the, uh, uh, um, the, uh, the profile of, of shallow stratigraphy. Now, the orientation of trench. Uh, I hope this uh, uh, is a bit clear because what we have discussed in the previous uh, uh, 
uh, two slides that uh, we, we, we took the GPR profile here and then we opened up the trench across this. So always it is ideal to, uh, if you are having a scarp like this, then uh, you, you, it is ideal to open up the trench covering the area like uh, what has been shown here. So what we are doing is we are covering the area of uh, the, the, the deformed units and the undeformed units in the, in the footwall side. So trench trending transverse to the scarp exposing the upthrown side, upthrown and the downthrown block. This is extremely essential because this will help us in, in uh, uh, identifying uh, the, the, the events. Okay. So the exposing both the portion helps to view the, the pre-faulted strata on both uh, foot walls as well as on the hanging wall. So this um, uh, is important. If you just dug, dig this portion, then you may not be able to compare the units which are which existed before the faulting. So this is one type of trench uh, uh, which has been shown here, and mostly this type of trenches are very uh, narrow trenches are been dug in US. So the method remains the same. You open up the section here, and what they have done here in this one very narrow trench you have and and to to protect the walls here because uh, the looking to the loose sediments quaternary sediments will be very loose and chances of collapsing of the the trench wall is very frequent uh, in such a uh, uh, such digging so they have put the jacks here to to support the wall uh, uh, and prevent the collapse there are different type of uh, 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 like uh, uh, digging which has been shown here uh, depending on what type of machines which are available in the country uh, you can you can go for digging if you want to go deeper then you use the the back hole which has been shown here with the chain uh, in the wheels or maybe you can use the smaller one usually what we do in india and that what we call jcb So this is uh, uh, the, the machine usually we have been using uh, for uh, uh, our trenching purpose. This is uh, what we did in Kangra um, and uh, this is easily available in the, the local market. You can hire this and uh, you can use for, for digging your trenches. But you have to be extremely uh, careful when the digging has been done because the operator doesn't know that where exactly to dig and how deep it should uh, he uh, uh, the operator should go um, in terms of the depth and how uh, how how much should be the width and all that and which portion should be dug uh, in the deep uh, up uh, uh, to for a greater depth and which portion should be shallow down okay so uh, with the experience we have uh, uh, been digging initially we used manpower but that was a very uh, uh, time consuming affair because um, digging the trench by hand uh, will take a lot of time and that may also uh, eat away a lot of money as well as uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the process will be extremely slow. But we are using the, the back holes or the machines JCB belly, uh, then that can help you in digging the trench in, in one or two days. Now, uh, uh, as we we discussed in the previous uh, a couple of slides that uh, using GPR and having some idea about the subsurface uh, deformation, we can restrict our digging. The one of the slide which I was showing in the previous one here, so this trench has been opened for very long actually. Okay, you have uh, made, uh, the scarp is quite high of course, but the trench which is opened is quite long here. And it was across 23 meter high scarp, but uh, in some locations we don't go so high because of uh, uh, because it is dangerous and it may collapse in some portion. So GPR, uh, in our knowledge and with understanding, we it is a very um, robust technique which is available. Hence, we will give you one lecture on this so that you you, you understand about the process of the G, the G, uh, GPR. So shape and style of trenches varies from uh, uh, location to location and also 
uh, from country to country. Uh, so, the previous uh, slide which I was showing the long trench was an American style. So, usually the Americans they are very much uh, for happy opening the trench, very long trench and a very narrow uh, in, 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 in width. Okay. So, numerous uh, fatalities have occurred when vertical walls have collapsed on geologists when uh, who were uh, crushed or crunched at the base of the trench. And uh, let me just share this uh, with you that uh, my I was just saved when uh, uh, one of the trench wall collapsed in when we were digging the uh, the trench in Gujarat. So uh, we have to be extremely careful while digging the trench. We should not allow the machine to um, to be uh, for longer time uh, on the on the trench side or the trench wall. And we also do one thing that we try to. Uh, put the whatever the excavated material from the trench to be away from the trench wall so that it doesn't come roll down into the trench. So uh, these are few things which we learn with the experience, but we have to be extremely careful. So we need to because we cannot we should not load uh, the trench wall by the, uh, the, the by putting the excavated material on, on either side. So that has to be extremely careful and then, uh, we, as I, as I told that we should put this away from the trench uh, a little bit so that we have the space here available and we fix up that this material which is sitting on the top it may contain all fluvial deposits and all that big boulders or, or cobbles which may uh, roll down when you are working uh, in the trench because you, you need to do a lot of uh, uh, work to identify different sedimentary layers grading of the of the wall and all that so you need to be extremely safe when you are moving uh, in the exposed trench so this is what i was showing you that this uh, the uh, geologists uh, in us usually use a single uh, slot trenches uh, into the face and two of this is this has been done in 8 meter high normal fault scrub so you have this part is the in normal fault scrub this portion will be your uh, stationary wall and this is the hanging wall. So they have opened a very long single slit trench. Now uh, this is in US and they have put uh, the the supports here so that the the walls are not collapsed. And as I was saying that the uh, uh, the material which has been uh, dug from here should be put away from the trench. So this portion should uh, be uh, should not be covered by the uh, the excavated scree because this may create pressure on this and the, it results into the collapsing of the wall. So this is US style and uh, there is another photograph of that. So you, you do a lot of uh, uh, detailed uh, uh, mapping uh, and uh, before getting into the mapping you need to clean all the walls and all that and uh, by brush you can do that. So usually we use the painting brush and very fine and with the soft hand uh, we don't apply much pressure but with the soft hand we keep on cleaning the, the wall very precisely. And also the this top surface has to be cleaned very properly because uh, this also will help when we are, we are measuring the, the amount of displacement during single events or individual events. So the top unit is uh, should be very well clean along with the, the the section which is exposed in the trench. There is uh, another way of trenching uh, which is very common to the opus open cast mining which has been done here. So it is a very wide trench and this is more or less very safe in the sense because you are creating steps, you are not creating uh, uh, the, the steep wall. And if you are doing this type of trenching then you can go deeper, uh, 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 you can reach to the deeper portion of the fault or the displaced units. Now again, uh, what, is, what, uh, what you see here is that you have a very small uh, slit here and then uh, they have, they have gone, gone into the deeper portion here. So this is the, the area of uh, that where the maximum layers are displaced. So this is the fault fault zone, hence it has been opened deeper 
to study the uh, the more more events as compared to what you see here so this is of course is important because this these are uh, the pre faulted layers these are faulted layers and then here also you will have the pre faulted as well as post faulted layers which are, will be exposed in the in the area then uh, what we do is that after uh, we open the trench uh, i'll i'll show up this uh, exercise what we usually we do uh, in uh, uh, more uh, lectures which will be giving on uh, as a case study then we will we'll be talking that but in short here what we have what we would like to show here that we have traced all this so before uh, uh, like after the trenching we cleaned up all this uh, uh, the whole wall and then demarcate the contacts between different layers based on the physical properties so that includes your grain size that includes your color and then whether we we are looking some soil formation or ancient soil which are also been displaced and also we try to fix up the uh, the top soil and all that and then uh, after the classification you can uh, you can prepare a detailed sketch of this and uh, uh, um, on on a tracing sheet uh, with the, because you you will put in grids here so you can have the whole wall can be graded either in um, uh, 50 by 50 centimeter or 1 meter by 1 meter square and that grid can help you in mapping uh, the the respective units as well as you that will help you in identify uh, locating the the uh, the, the or sketching the fault which uh, where where it crosses okay in the in the trench and then you can prepare a legend which will uh, which is which is given here like you have topsoil colluvium silty sand and different so these are all been classified you can see that these are based on the grain size and and also based on the color so you can do that and you can discuss in detail while writing the description of this individual or respective units that what uh, probable environment they are reflecting so either they are, they are showing the the quartz deposit for example uh, indicative of the channel uh, deposits or uh, uh, during the uh, the high energy conditions and finer probably are reflecting your overbank deposits and all that so for uh, this is one way so in this uh, exposed trench what another important point which you can note it down that uh, there are like older uh, rocks or the the, uh, the is also been exposed which also helps in understanding that this fault has remained active and is deep seated which has displaced the the rocks as well as the the younger sediments which are overlying the uh, country rock here in this area now uh, uh, moving further uh, so in this uh, one important point is that uh, the exposed section of the trench also shows that uh, the the older rocks are also are, are displaced along the along the fault here so this one point is important here that when you come across in any region where you are able to expose the uh, the, uh, the not exactly the basement rock but the older rocks and then it is um, uh, good in a sense because that will help us in identifying and characterizing the fault that the fault is deep seated and it has uh, displaced the older as well as the younger succession now another style of the trench uh, as compared to what we have seen the single slot trench of us uh, the japanese trenches usually are been seen the uh, open very wide trenches and one basic uh, a parameter which they uh, they include is that they keep the, the walls inclined and this is for the safety purpose and with the inclined trenches you can go deeper and the sketch of the uh, the plan view of the trench which has been shown here this shows that you have the fault trace which goes over here and this portion is been excavated uh, for more deeper uh, part actually and then you can have the uh, the this is the section which has been shown so this portion is comparatively deeper as compared to what has been uh, shown here now this uh, ramp uh, uh, is usually has been given because when you are digging the uh, the portion here the machine can easily come out from this portion uh, so uh, 
uh, the Japanese trenches usually what we see is the wider trenches. So, if you can uh, compare this the width also here it is around a 8 meters wide and then you have the, the length of the trench and more deeper portion has been open where you are having the fall trace or the fall scarp. And type of trenches in different areas if you look at then you can have uh, the single slot trench then laid back trench you have the benches which we have discussed and then you have the bulldoze trenches with a single slot uh, which goes for the deeper part. So, the ideal way is to open the trench is your uh, across the, uh, uh, the scarp uh, that is transfers to the scarp and the portion where you uh, expose the fault uh, you can go deeper in this area. So, as I was uh, mentioning that uh, uh, one can use the manpower to dig the trench and this we did uh, uh, in the area of northeast in Siliguri region where we expose uh, uh, the Ganga Brahmaputra fault. We can uh, imagine that how many uh, 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 labors we have put to dig this trench and very small trench was been dug here and we also face problem of water logging in this region and mostly in uh, in many trenches uh, you you face this so you need to have an uh, the water pump which keep on uh, removing the water from the from the trench because you need to keep the floor uh, dry uh, to some extent and then uh, that also helps in also while mapping the the trench walls you can use and uh, small machines to dig the trenches uh, if you are opening uh, uh, for just for the reconnaissance that you can do or you can use uh, this is what has been shown with the chain here. So, uh, that can help you go deeper and, and you can easily put the material on either side of the trench wall. In India basically what we do is we, we also keep to some extent the wall is not uh, so straight or the vertical, but we keep the walls inclined and, and uh, put the, the trench a little bit wider up to 4 meters and that also is an advantage because we need to photograph uh, the, the complete trench and the distance, idle distance which we should keep uh, with the uh, for, uh, between the SLR camera lens and the wall should be more than 3 meters or so, so that we can have proper focusing and all that. So, that also helps in, in moving uh, the uh, moving in the trench easily uh, without any, any issues if you are opening a very shallow or, or very narrow uh, uh, single slot trenches. So, after uh, we do uh, uh, the, uh, the trenches which are been opened, this is from India again and the most important part that what I, I discussed in one of the slide was the safety ok. So, if you see this uh, the students we are using the helmets and this was a bit unfortunate that we were not having the working helmets with us. So, we bought the, uh, the helmets which uh, uh, in India people use for uh, uh, while driving scooters or uh, motorbikes and those helmets were being used because we were not having the, the working helmets with us. Again, uh, this we have done, uh, we have the deeper part here and we have tried to put the, the material away from the, from the trench wall. So, you need to do a lot of uh, cleaning here before you get into the, the business of mapping the each unit and then you need to grid what, it, what has been shown here. So, you, you will have to have a lot of uh, patience while doing this and each and every uh, unit should be properly demarcated before you start mapping the, uh, the, uh, the trench and that, that uh, preparing the detailed trench lock. So, this is the view of that. So, you have uh, the, the whole top surface has been properly cleaned so that you can demarcate the, the top uh, layer or the soil unit and you have uh, we, we clean this uh, portion and again what I, I, I mentioned in the, in the previous one that uh, uh, the, the type of sediments you, we, we may come across that if you are having the, the, uh, the pebbly material then the chances of caving is very common 
um, in, in most of the areas. So we need to be very, uh, uh, pres uh, like precautions need to be taken to keep the wall slightly inclined so that we don't face this. And this even, even we put slightly inclined, we face this, but uh, then we did not go deeper in this area and we did we carried out our mapping so this shows what i was talking about that you need to prepare the grids so that you can do precise mapping of the trench wall this is the grid which has been shown here is one by one meter by one meter we also use uh, uh, the uh, this machine and then we can we can have uh, the deeper trenches but with the with the normal machines which i was showing here this one we cannot go uh, to uh, a very uh, deeper part, max maximum up to uh, three, three to four meters. But with this, you can go for more deeper because this has a more uh, bigger boom here, and then you can uh, you can have the uh, the easy excavation with such machines. So this was one of the trench which we opened across the scarp, which was almost like 50 to 60 meters long. And as I was talking again, you can see that we have kept the material away from the, the trench wall so that the, uh, the load has not been transferred to the exposed wall here. And the trench wall is slightly inclined, very much similar to what we, uh, we saw in, in, in terms of the Japanese trenches. Also, along with this, if you can see here, what we are doing is we are taking a topographic profile, uh, which is important for mapping the landforms. This we did in uh, Gujarat using a, a smaller machine. Uh, the previous one was from Himalayas, both the trenches which uh, were dug in Himalayas and this is from uh, uh, Gujarat, Kutch region along Kutch mainland fault. So uh, initially what you will find is a very crude surface okay, and very rough surface which has been exposed. So you need to clean uh, very precisely to uh, so that the 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 different uh, uh, stratigraphic units are very clear. So this is what you can see in that one. So the, the next time we always use the helmets and all that, and you can you can have more of uh, small tools which can help you in uh, slight deeper excavation. So you need to do a lot of labor work when you are opening the trench and as well as while cleaning the trench and all that. So this is the, the deformed unit. You can see clearly here. So you have a gravel bed which is getting down here. And this is a beautiful exposure of the displaced unit. You can see this one here. So you have sandy layer and then you have the gravel layer which has been folded along this fault here. Then, as I told that you have to do, uh, after the cleaning, uh, you need to do a lot of uh, uh, measurements and you need to have a proper grading which has been shown here and that what we are doing is we are uh, measuring the, uh, the attitudes of the fault, how much the inclination has been seen, that is the depth of the fault and what is the amount of displacement when you fix up the different units. So this is the uh, the, the wall how you should put it very clean and even you can see the top surface is been precisely cleaned so that we have the, the, the proper measurements okay and then we are we are putting the grids after cleaning so we use a lot of uh, smaller tools which I'm having one of the slide which, which, which will tell you that all, all all you need and then we prepared a small board uh, which you can tie uh, hang uh, in your neck and that uh, can be used to uh, while while you are tracing the, uh, the 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 complete wall and taking noting down all the measurements so these are the diff different tools which you can uh, you should have with you like you have uh, the hammer which is common then shawls you have you should have brushes to clean and then to some extent you can even use the uh, the water to spray on the wall that will help you in differentiating between the different layers. If you are suppose you are having the clay layers and the silt layer or sand layer, then the absorption of water for by different layers will vary and that will give you the prominent demarcation which helps in differentiating different layers. 
and this is one of the most common tool which we are using which is known as uh, nijirigama and this is uh, you know, usually uh, people use in in japan and this is what has been shown here is the nijirigama uh, from from japan and many uh, uh, geologists or the paleo seismologist favor uh, to use this unit and we we also use this which can be developed in india also and there is no harm but this is a tool which usually a common farmer uses in in japan and this helps us in cleaning the wall very precisely so after that uh, you need to do uh, uh, the detail mapping which is, has been shown here so in some time uh, because if the walls are are little uh, high then you 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 have to use the ladder uh, which helps you in uh, measuring the the units precisely so this this trench if you see is almost like half meter here one two and almost uh, uh, three meters uh, deep so uh, as i uh, i'm emphasizing that we need to do a lot of mapping here and we need uh, so sometime what we do is we spray the water uh, so this is just in uh, simple you must have seen this type of uh, uh, unit uh, carried by the farmers while putting the uh, the pesticides in the field so we 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 try to use this to spray on the on the walls and to clean the uh, the wall all all to or, or to we can say that we 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 use this to to make the the different units prominent the uh, really exposed okay and then we do uh, sketching or or the uh, with the help of uh, one of the the team member measuring the uh, the the displacement or measuring the thickness of the uh, uh, your units and that has been put in the grid here so same grid should be reflected on your tracing sheet and as uh, uh, i told that in the in, in japan mostly uh, uh, what we do is we use uh, uh we put lot of water on the wall and uh, that but sometime this is not very good in the sense because that that may result into the collapse of the walls okay but this spraying putting water here uh, will will remove the uh, uh the 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 finer sediments which uh, are are uh, getting coating or which are coating the different layers and that may uh, result into misinterpretation of the of the different Uh, uh, or while demarcating the different units so final sketch what you look the this is from the previous trench what we are having here so you have uh, this sketch so you have identified different uh, units you have in, even you have uh, uh, drawn here or sketched the uh, the pebbles um, and cobbles which are been seen and the cross cutting relationship between the different layers how the different layers are been inclined and what Uh, we see in the fault zone actually that, that helps in in justifying that uh, what was the last when was the last event and how uh, the different events can be identified using the sketch okay so uh, one exercise which we did which is important for us that is the trench from uh, I'll, i'll just explain here this is the trench from uh, uh, kutch which was excavated uh, uh, at uh, lodai village uh, across kutch mainland fault and this was the trench the previous uh, uh, slide the sketch which i was showing was from the same uh, uh, trench another uh, uh, exercise which one can do is that if you have uh, taken a very precise uh, uh, trench photographs and then now what we do is that we we uh use the tiles one tile that is 1 by 1 meter and uh, this this photograph is been put in a uh, uh, number of photographs you will have for example you will have separate photographs of for separate grids with some overlap and that you can uh, you can uh, correct uh, in terms of the uh, the size in photoshop and you can mosaic it and that can help again in very precise mapping of the trench wall in one of the uh the lecture i'll i'll just show you that what we have done to uh, have the very precise uh, trench lock so this uh, again what we did was that since we knew that this is the this are this is the area which can help us in identifying different uh, uh, 
uh, events and and that was based on the amount of displacement which we measured uh, between the different layers actually so you have like uh, unit c so the, based on the uh, the uh, the color based on the grain size uh, we uh, uh, we classified this uh, uh, the whole trench in different uh, sedimentary units so you have the rocks here exposed Meso uh, mainly the uh, mesozoic rocks in kutch so you have shared uh, rock uh, comprised of shale and sandstone and this is what you have the fault uh, 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 fault plains which are exposed here and then you have uh, the different units here like d and then you have c b and all that so you can easily make out uh, the uh, the different uh, context between the different units and how they have been uh, showing the deformational pattern here so what we did was we when we measured the the displacement between the c and uh, that is the lower boundary the, the lower boundary of c and the upper boundary of d here has been marked here and then then you are having the the uh, the upper boundary of the unit d so the displacement which was measured here uh, the net displacement of d unit is 73 whereas the displacement of the again which we have measured here is the contact uh, mm, this is the the portion here and so on the foot wall this is your foot wall and this is your hanging wall so we have the uh, the the upper bounding surface of C is sitting here the upper bounding surface with respect to the B on the that is your overlying unit of on C so you have 33 centimeter here and similarly what we see between this and this is your the displacement along the fault is 73 centimeter and similarly between this and this contact you have 33 centimeters so uh, east wall uh, east wall view of uh, a trench excavated across active fault scarp near Lodai village along Kutch mainland fault in Kutch. This is one of the active fault and this was the first trench, successful trench in Kutch which we opened up. So trench at uh, Lodai, this was the portion which we took uh, for uh, our further interpretation and what it shows here. Okay. So you have uh, uh, the same log here um, which we have cut and we try to retro deform. Okay. So we, we perform the retro deformation by restoring the stratigraphic contacts of C along F3 fault. This was which is marked here is your F3 uh, fault. Okay. So along this uh, what displacement we saw that as I have explained that it was 33 and 73 then how what what exactly this tells us actually let us let us move ahead okay in this so we have 33 uh, centimeter here which was measured uh, between this point and this point here so you have the the upper bounding surface of c uh, with respect to b so this is 33 centimeter so we displaced and matched this one and then we have the 73 centimeter with the upper upper bounding surface between D and C and D and C on the foot wall and the hanging wall here. So the displacement along F3 fault strand um, and, and particularly of C provided excellent example to understand how two events have been registered along F2. Okay. So you have uh, the latest event because uh, why we see that see that say that this is a latest event because there is no displacement which has been seen I'll just go back quickly because there is no displacement which has been seen uh, uh, which has displaced the B unit further here the A is the capping unit here so 73 centimeter uh, and then we have first we took the 33 one and 33 centimeter and we tried to match the uh, the units okay so we have what we have done that after restoring 33 centimeter displacement during the latest event that was we have marked as an event one some deficit in terms of displacement that is around 40 centimeter remained 
This suggests that 33 centimeter of displacement occurred during the latest event and the remainder 40 centimeter represent the penultimate event. So second last event uh, was because there is still this displacement, this layer, the, this, this, is, this is not matching here. Only the top surface here, the contact is been matched. Okay, So still we are left out with this one. So we have 33 centimeter here and then we are still left out with 40 centimeter. Then let us do the same for matching the um, uh, the lower bounding surface of C uh, that is between C and D what we see okay so we have this one here so matching the lower bounding surface of unit C okay lower bounding surface of unit C on either side of the fault plane reveal the, the displacement of 40 centimeter and the deficit of 33 centimeter on the upper side of the fault so we have the deficit of 33 centimeter here this is 40 and this is left out is 33 centimeter on the, on the up, up, upper side of the fault that is up dip of the fault okay this suggests occurrence of two events on a cumul with an cumulative displacement of 73 centimeter during one and two events so total what we have is the 73 so you can do this exercise which can help you in identifying uh, the different events and uh, what uh, uh, it suggests is that uh, the 73 uh, centimeter of displacement on a particular fault strain was a cumulative displacement and the recent displacement which was observed or recorded in the trench along the along the same fault was only 33 centimeter. So when you will be able to differentiate different or, or identify different units the, and the, the amount of displacement that will help you in uh, 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 locating, identifying the different units and amount of displacement during that. So this what you see is the cumulative displacement uh, and that is indicating that there, there were more than two events because we had a handle of that the recent uh, movement was, uh, uh, was having only 33 centimeters. Okay. So you can have a very beautiful sketch which you can prepare uh, with the uh, with the, uh, with the help of uh, the detailed measurements you have to you do, and this can also help in understanding the pattern of deformation along different fault strengths. There's another trench which we dug uh, in Himalayas, and uh, which also uh, like uh, in this trench. Uh, we were able to pick up the fault, but along with the, uh, the that demarcating the fault is not a very easy task because this type of contact, as we have, we were talking in the beginning about the primary and the secondary uh, features, uh, can also mimic with the uh, with the um, uh, channel deposits. Okay, so um, we need to be extremely careful what we are looking at is the the primary structure or this is a secondary. Uh, feature of uh, because of the faulting. So sometimes uh, what we uh, we experience that that uh, and that we have followed later on for all trenches that uh, 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 sketching down the uh, the the each and every pebble here to some extent you can do that and it will be difficult for putting the smaller uh, pebbles. But if you are having the larger ones, that can give you. A preferred orientation like what we you were been able to see in the previous one. So for example along with that we also take into consideration that along the fall plane you what you will see is the alignment of the the flat pebbles. Okay. So this flat pebbles will get oriented along the along the fault plane or parallel to the fall plane and that what we call shear fabric and shear fabric and the sediments uh, is extremely important to differentiate between the uh, the primary structure and the secondary one. So this is surely uh, for sure shot that this is what we see here is your uh, secondary structure that is your fault. Then uh, uh, coming to the uh, the another part that uh, we usually see that in multiple events you may see that in the in, in the top portion the ground 
or in the up dip, up dip part of the falls you will have minimum displacement and you go deeper you will able to see the displacement increases and uh, the another one which is important is that uh, the, the event horizon so the last earthquake if you we consider that this was the fault and this uh, has displaced the uh, QL2 unit but it hasn't displaced the Q1, Q, QAL1 so this is the capping unit and this was the last event when it occurred so you if you sample this two you will be able to bracket the event when exactly occurred so before this and after this okay. and this will be may be considered as an event horizon for this particular event so next earthquake when it will it, it displaces this gear this one that is QAL1 then this is the the event horizon for that so next one the deposition will cover this that will be your capping unit identification of litho units um, uh, will play an extremely important role because that will help us in identifying different uh, environment as well as uh, the 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 amount of displacement which we will be able to measure between uh, uh, different uh, layers so mapping of litho units should uh, uh, be include a process where we use usually the color chart that is Munsell color chart which helps to differentiate the unit as well as the age of the unit like darker colors indicate older deposits okay, and so on then we have the grain size either they are the units are gravel sand or you can have silt and clay then you have percentage of plast so that this with this you can you can talk about whether it is uh, the alluvial fan deposit or it is reflecting the, the channel deposits okay. then class shape is also important if they are angular then we can also talk about the uh, the distance they, they have been transported whether they are just the scree material which was been uh, transported from the, the scarp which was developed or they, they are indicative of the long distance then also we talk about sorting metrics compaction thickness of the unit on either side of the, the displaced uh, uh, blocks sedimentary structures primary structures or not so these are all uh, important parameters which you can use uh, while while mapping the, the trench and the bounding surface there are scant contacts so we you can also talk about that whether you, you see an erosional contact or depositional contact and all that so the understanding of sedimentology is also important while mapping the, uh, the trench walls and then finally uh, the importance comes as the, the structural uh, geology part so you, you, you map the, uh, the secondary structures that is deformational structures so this trench again it shows in the normal faulting environment where you have uh, which shows the uh, the angular gravels and then you have the stratified material here and th which has been marked in the shear zone and then depending on that as i was showing in one of the, the slide from uh, kutch mainland fault that depending on that which a portion of the trench um, is exhibiting the the excellent detail in terms of the deformation that portion can be studied in detail mapping of shear fabric this is one uh, example which has been shown and one already i have i have discussed in from the trench uh, which we dug in himalaya that you have the the preferred orientation of the flat pebbles uh, which which will get uh, oriented along or aligned along the the fault plane when they are uh, when uh, the, when there is a deformation and the displacement uh, this was uh, uh, this is being done uh, uh, in in Japan mainly what we call the geo slicer and uh, 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 but sometimes this is uh, um, this is not so good in the sense because you you may um, uh, uh, may not be having the good site to to put the the geo slice if you are having very coarse deposits so what is uh, has been done that you have a very thick uh, metal uh, sheet here uh, which has been uh, pushed down uh, into the surface uh, with the help of uh, crane and the vibrator which has been mounted here uh, and this of course is an expensive uh, uh, affair 
but yes of in the in the areas where you don't have the enough space to dig then you can easily uh, do multiple uh, slicing uh, and and you can you can use that data very quickly so this is an exercise which is commonly done in japan where uh, the the geo slice has been uh, is been used to to uh, locate the fault trace so here you can instead of opening multiple trenches you can easily you know, put so for example if you are, if you identify that probably the fault is running somewhere here on the surface then you can have uh, multiple slices which you can take from different location okay and that can also help you in identifying the orientation of the of the fault so uh, uh, this is the the first uh, a plate which has been uh, pushed in to the into the ground and then uh, uh, so this is what has been shown here and then you put the uh, the cover slit here uh, which will bring out the thick slice uh, in this section or the thick uh, sediment slice in this one and which can be easily so this is the, the cover here which has been put uh, after uh, this portion has been pushed down and then locked and pulled up okay so what we see is that you have you will be able to um, have the complete log of the trench in no time and you can clean it and you can put the the uh, the net or fine net cloth cotton cloth and you can have the peel of that uh, uh, trench wall also okay. so you can have peel and then you can mosaic it which can help you in preserving this in lab this is one of the the greatest advantage of this technique that you can bring home or bring back in your lab the whole trench lock so the fault trace is here it goes up to this one and you can see the deformation and the deposits similarly another one the fault trace goes here goes is branching out here so in japan this is one of the most common uh, practice that the after the trench has been open and studies are been done they will uh, invite the local uh, uh, people and also the administration to to look at that what exactly uh, is the history of a particular fault which is uh, close to their homes or it is passing through their cities okay and this is the the kind of an outreach program which they run and similar things we we all we are we we have planned in india we did a couple of uh, workshops to train uh, the young people and also we are now planning to invite when we open the trenches we will invite uh, the uh, on the administration and all that and another part of this course hopefully we hopefully we will be able to deliver that we are going to uh, give you an additional add on uh, course of linked with this one only where we are going to uh, uh, shoot the movies in the field and uh, also what we are doing in trenching and how we we excavate the trench how we locate the location and what other all uh methods we use to to map map those and all that we will we will do that uh, in in additional uh, part of this one thank you so much we'll continue in the next lecture